right? OK. OK, let's start. Now, I have passed around the, 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 the name list. Huh? So please find your name and sign there. All right, uh, I think if you remember, we were looking at the types of the types of problems in trans data transmission, right? And if you remember, we saw that at the beginning, there are a few types. Right, so there are three types of impairments or problems with data transmission, right? Which can which can cause errors. And uh, so what we need to do is that now, what we, need to, what we need to do now is basically to detect those errors. So we know that the transmission media is not perfect. There will be problems in terms of transmitting the signals. So whatever signals sent by the source may not be the same as the signals received by the receiver or destination. Right? There will be problems along the way. So we need to, there must be some system or some, some method to actually detect those errors. So this is what our second part of the chapter goes on. How to detect the errors? Right? What do we, need, do we need to do? Right? So for applications, we, we must make sure that the data transmission is correct, accurate. Whatever is being sent must be the same what is being received. Right? This is the job of the application. So, we, we, so that in, in that case, the data is received correctly by the receiver. We do not want to receive wrong data. That, that's that's not, not correct. So data must be received correctly by the, uh, by the destination. So the application will, will have some kind of mechanism for detecting and correcting those errors. Right? So another thing is the applications, how much how are the applications tolerance towards the errors? Can one or two errors okay? Is it is it okay or not okay? Or it must be always must be zero errors, no errors, no compromise. Or a few errors is okay. Right? For example, I'm talking to you. Do you think it should be zero errors? Or a few errors here and there is okay? Of course you want zero errors. Right, but I might make, I might might make mistakes, right? So if you do your homework, you read the chapter before you come to class, you will know whether I, whether or not I'm making mistake, right? Then you will know that uh, the, the 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 whatever data you receive during the lecture is there any mistakes made, right? So you must have knowledge, in other words. So certain things. For example, like audio and video, if there is a slight error, for example, you're watching a, a, a YouTube video, right? One or two errors happen during the transmission. Is it okay? A few bits were lost, a few frames were lost. Do you think it's a problem? Yes or no? Yes. You all? Do you think it's a problem if you if, if you watch you are watching a YouTube video and then one or two frames of the video is missing? Do you think you will you will notice the 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 missing data? Maybe not, right? Because it's very fast. You have thirty frames per second. If one frame missing, you get twenty nine frames per second. For that one alone, you might not even miss, right? So in, in audio video, normally, if there is a missing data, it's, it's OK. It's not too bad. As long as the missing data is not too much. Right? So missing frames is all right. But for other text and binary data, if you send a word file, and again, some missing data there, what happens? Your word file on the other side will not be correct. You will see some garbage here and there. You have lost some characters. So that cannot be tolerated. Right? Audio video normally is okay, not too bad. As long as as long as as long the loss is not too much. Not to say into 
3 seconds or 5 seconds or 10 minutes, of course, then you lose a lot. Right? So it depends on the application itself. But our problem here is that what we want to do is that we try to make sure we transfer data correctly and there are systems to detect those errors. So before we go, we go into that, let's look at the type of errors that can happen. Right? So the first type is so-called single bit error. Right? Single bit error basically means that only one bit is, has been changed when it was sent from the source to destination. So what, this is what we are sending, and then this is what is received. So one of the bits has been changed. Right? So this is called single bit error. So if we are sending at 1 megabits per second, our data rate, for single bit error to happen, that means the noise this level, at this, at this uh, interval must be very, very short at one microsecond. Because each, at one megabit per second, each bit's duration is only one microsecond. So if you say only one bit has been changed, that means the noise was very, very short, one microsecond. And this is very unlikely. You do not get a noise which is one microsecond. That's like in, in this room. Nobody makes a noise in one, in one microsecond, it's just too short. When you say something, it'll take a few seconds at least. Half a second or maybe one second. One microsecond is just too, too short. Right? So it's, it's least likely to happen in transmission. So single bit errors seldom happen. So what we get is normally so-called burst errors. Right? So burst errors means that errors happen more than one bit has been changed. Right? Two or more bits is affected. And the noise actually happens for a short duration of time. Right? During that duration of the noise, multiple bits has been affected or has been changed. Right? So what do we mean by how long is the burst? It's, it's measured from the first corrupted bit to the last corrupted bit. And some of the bits in between may not be corrupted at all. Right? Let's take the example here. So this is the first. So this is the bit sent, bits received. The first bit in error is bit number four. And then there's another one error, another one error, another one error. Right? After that, it's all OK. So in this case, the definition for burst error is that how many bits is the distance between the first error and the last error. So in this case, it is eight bits. is the distance between the first error and the last error. So we call this as a burst error of eight bits. Right? Although in between, there are bits which are correct. Only four, bi four, er four bits were in error, but our burst error length is 8. Right? That is what, what he mentioned by this. So this is more likely. So burst error is more likely to happen than single bit error, because normally the duration of noise is always more than one bit. Right? And of course, the burst error also depends on how fast you are transmitting data and also how long was the noise. Right? If the faster you transmit, the higher your speed, then for the particular noise duration, you will have more bits in error. Your burst will be longer right? compared to uh, if your speed is fast, less. All right, so now we know there are two types of errors, right? bits being uh, changed. So let's compare what do, we, what do we mean by error detection and error correction. So obviously, the error detection means that we are trying to see if the error has happened, if any error has happened. So normally, we just require an answer of yes or no. Has error happened? Yes or no? That's what we want to know. How many errors happen? Not important. Whether it's single bit, one bit, one bit changed, or multiple bits changed, doesn't matter. As long as one error has happened, we say, yes, this error happened. Right? So that's what we mean by error detection. Because even though one error happens, it means that the whole might not be able to be used. We, need, we, not, we may need to either correct the data, or we may need, we may need to retransmit the contents again, right? even though it's a single bit error. Right? So that's error detection. Error correction. We, as the name says, that we not only try to detect whether error has happened, but we also try to 
correct the errors. So in order to correct the errors, we need to know how many errors happened and also their location. Right? At which, which, which bit was the one which was an error? And how many of them there are? Right? So it gets slightly more complicated now. So we need to know the number and the location of bits which are corrupted. So of course the number of errors and the message size is important. So there are two different methods to do with error correction. One is to send extra, extra bits together with the data, which will act as our uh, control bits to be able to check your error correction. And the other is basically for retransmission. Right? So when you ask for retransmission, you just check the tech. Right? Has there been error in this particular frame? Packet of data, is there an error? Yes, an error? Okay, the whole frame get, gets retransmitted. Right? But if it's error checking, error correction, then we need to find out which bits in the frame has been affected or changed. Right? The location and also the number. Then we, need, we try to see whether we can actually correct those errors. So this is how it works. Right? So the sender side, it will take the data, and then it will convert, convert the data, and then it will put some, it will say that the data itself will be added with some redundant bits, extra bits. And then this thing will be transmitted over the, the lines. There's a possibility of error happening here. On the receiver side, it will go through a, some kind of checking mechanism. It will check whether the data has the original message sent is, uh, is correct or not. Right? How does it check? It will base on the, the extra bits which are sent. Right? Then decide if the message, if, if, it's, if checking is correct, it detects no errors, then the message is read. Otherwise, the message will be thrown away and say, okay, retransmit. Right? So that's the process flow. So, it's to, so to detect or correct errors, we need to send extra bits of data. Right? That's very important. So here, the example of how do we send extra bits of data in order for error correction or error detection to work. So first of all, we will divide our message into blocks of data. Each block will be, say, consists of k bits. Right? We call this the data words. Then for every every block of data word, we will add redundant bits to it. So let's say R. Right? So we call these the code words. So now the data words plus the code words will be sent onto the transmission media. Right? So what we are sending is if our original, we have K bits of data, K here, we will add R number of extra bits, and then we're going to send N number of. So whatever is being transmitted is basically N n number of bits for every block. Right? So k is the original data bits, r is the extra bits added to it. So this is the n is the number of bits we actually transmit over the lines. So this again the the relationship. So we have we take our original message, we break up into k bits, blocks of k bits. For each k, k bit block, we will add some extra r bits to make it n bits. Right? So there's a one to one relationship between this and this. Right? So let's take an example. All right, before we go into the example, let me see. Okay. Okay, let's, let's take an example first. All right? Okay, no. This one first. All right. So, in order to change, we need to convert. We need to convert the data, the data word, the original, original bits. We need to add some redundant bits to make into a, a code word, right? So the, the data bit will be converted into a, a code word. So the receiver must also have a list of the same code words, and it must follow the same mechanism of adding, right? So the original code word, code word will be changed to an invalid one, right? So again, the sender will take the data words, k words. The generator will 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 add in the redundant bits. 
put in and um, then becomes the k plus n becomes n, k plus r becomes n. This is being transmitted. And then on the receiver side, you will check again and see whether there's any error. If there's no error, then the data bits will be extracted and then passed into the receiver. If not, then it is discarded. Right? Uh, so this is how, how it's going to work. Example. Right? So in this case, k is 2, n is 3. It means that our original data is 2 bits. What we are sending is 3 bits right, on the transmission media. So we are adding extra 1 bit. So r is, r is 1 bit. We are extra, adding extra 1 bit to the, our original code word. Right? So let's say the sender wants to send 0, 1. He wants to send 0, 1. So this is, this is the table of the one-to-one -one, one -to -one relationship between data word and code word. When the, when the sender wants to send 0, 1, it actually sends 0, 1, 1. Right? So this is where it comes in. 0, 1 is here. So this, the generator will, will add extra bit, which is 1. So it becomes 0, 1, 1 will be transmitted over the line. Right? So, so on the receiving side, there are few possibilities. So we send 0, 1, 1 from here. And then what we receive on the receiver side is also 0, 1, 1, which is correct. Right? Let's say no, no error happened during transmission. So in this case, 0, 1, 1 is received. What you, what you will do is that you need to extract out the original data from there, data bits. So you're going to take the 0, 1, 1, look inside the table. Look at the code word 0, 1, 1. Is it there or not? It's there, okay. It's here, therefore, 0, 1, 1 is a valid code word because it's in the table. Now we can extract out. 0, 1, 1 refers to 0, 1, okay. We extract out 0, 1, right? So we know now we, we get the original data 0, 1. Let's say something goes wrong, right? One of the bits has been changed along the transmission. We send 0, 1, 1, receive this 1, 1, 1. So first bit has been changed. Right? One bit in error. So what do we need to do? The receiver will again take this 111 and then look in the table. Is 111 a valid code word? In this case, it is not. Right? So therefore, the checker will check. So this code word is not, this code word is basically not valid. So therefore, it will be discarded. Right? So 111 received means the corrupt code word is corrupted, you cannot extract out because the code word is not recognized. It's not one of the, in the table. All right? Let's say we have two errors now. We send 0, 0 1, 1, we receive 0, 0, 0. So two bits are error, in error. Bit number 2 and bit number 3 has been reversed. All right? So again, the same process goes. 0, 0, 0 will be looked up in the table and said, is 0, 0, 0 exist in the table? Yes, it exists. So now the receiver thinks that 0, 0, 0 is the valid code word received. So it will extract out 0, 0. But the user actually sent 0, 1. And you are now extracting 0, 0. Right? So this is, this is not wrong. This is just that this is the problem with this particular system. Right, this particular method, if one bit has been changed, it can detect the error. If two bits has been changed, it does not know its error, it thinks it's correct. And then it, extract, it gives you wrong information. Right? So this is the, the discrepancy or, or the drawback of this particular uh, encoding system. Right? So error detecting code can only detect types of errors for which it, it is designed. Other types may, may remain undetected. So in this case, this particular system only designed to detect single bit errors. Right? One bit errors, can. Two bit errors, no guarantee. Right? It, it can't, it can't. Okay. For error correction, so, so that, that's basically error detection, just detecting whether error happens or not. For error detection or for error correction, it becomes slightly more difficult now, right? So now the, the receiver not only need to check whether there's error happened, it needs to find 
need to find or guess what, you, what was the original code word sent. Right, so if there's an error in the code word, then you need to guess or find out whether what was the original uh, data bit sent. Right, so what he does, the same thing here, the checker now tries to correct the bits and see whether that's possible. Right, so now in this case, in case, instead of adding one extra bit, our system is trying to be more, more robust. It tries to add in three bits, three redundant bits. Right, so our k is two, and then our, our n becomes five now. Right, so this is the same, same two, two bits we are using to send, but in, instead of sending three bits, now we send five bits. So zero, zero is represented by all of zeros, zero, one is represented by n, so on. Right. So now again, sender wants to send 0, 1. So in this case, the encoding is going to send 5 bits. So it's going to send 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right? And then transmits it. Now on the receiving side, if we get 0, 1, 1 bit is changed. The, middle, the, the fourth bit has been, has been changed. So what happens? Is, so again, the code word, it checks 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Is it in, in the table? No, it's not in the table. So, but this is error correction. So then you will try to see, see this 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, try to guess which, which bit has been changed. All right? So how do you do that? We try to compare this, this received uh, code word with the existing one. See which one is the nearest. Right? So 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, is it nearest to this or nearest to this? Nearest, which one is, is, near, is the closest? Right? Closest means in terms of bit differences. Right? So if you compare this with this, there are two bits different, bit number 2 and bit number 5. So there are two bits different. If you compare this with this, one bit different. If you compare this with this, um, how many? At least 4 or 3. Right? Compare this with this, it will be also 3. Right? So in this case, the code word number two, second code word only, only differs by one bit compared to the invalid code word you receive. So in this case, now the system will say, okay, I'm guessing that most likely, although the, the code word you receive is not correct, it's not in the list, but I'm, I'm guessing that most likely what was sent was this one. Because it's the closest to the list of words we have. Right. So assuming, so in, in that case, that's the one, then you will just replace this with this and then gives out the zero one. Okay, fine. So in this case, it works. So that means a single bit error now, if it happens, we not only detect the error, but we can also correct it. Right? By trying to, by trying to find this code word is the nearest to which one. Right? So by adding more, Redundant bits, the robustness of your system improves in terms of error checking and correction. Right? Okay, now let's take a, take a look at a practical example. Now, we, we can use, so the practical example for error, error detection and correction are basically so called parity checks. Right? So simple parity check is basically is that you have normally seven bits of data, data bits, and then we add one extra bit at the, at the back, which we call the parity bit. Right? It's something like this. We have two bits, we add one bit. So in this case, for every seven bits, we will add one extra bit. Right? So the code word is basically data word, so the parity bit is only one bit here, extra one bit. There are two types of parities. The even parity and the odd parity. So what they try to do is that for odd, even parity, so, so for parity bit, we need, to, we need to decide whether to put, whether to put one or zero here. Right? So how we decide one or zero is depending on the system we use. If you use even parity system, then we try to make sure that the total number of ones in the sequence in the code word is even number, right? because we're using even parity. If you're using odd parity, then we try to make sure that the number of ones in the code word is an odd number. Right? So example, 
So this is what we want to send, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? 7 bits, we want to add one extra bit. So if it's even parity, that means the total number of ones in that transmission, in the, in the, in the code word must be even. So we count, how many ones do we have? How many ones do we have? Three. Is three odd or even? Three? Odd. Odd number, right? And we, this is even parity, so we must make it into an even number. So we put one there. So now we have four ones here, which is even number. Right? If you use odd parity, then the number of ones are already odd. So therefore, we put a zero. So it maintains its odd, odd number. Right? So normally you only, only use one, either even or odd. Right? So basically we just put extra one, one extra bit. Okay. So this is basically the, the example. Right? So we are using here. So what are we using here? Are we using even parity or odd parity? Look at this. If this is the one data word, this is the code word. Are we using even or odd? Odd or even? Even, right? Because the number of ones are always even number. Right? So this is how it works, encoding works, right? So the, the, the four bits will come in, data words will come in, data bits will come in, and then the generator will, will generate an extra one, one parity bit based on, on the data words coming in, whether it's parity, whether the, we use odd or even parity, right? And then the main thing is that on the other side, on the receiver side, you will check. You will check again whether the bits received now, all of them, is even or not. If it's not even, something's wrong, right? Because for example, like here, it's all even parity, right? So if we send, if we send say zero one 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 one, but we receive zero one 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 zero, right? The number of the number of bits in the received data is not even anymore, and we're using even parity, then something's wrong. Right? So we, we detect basically on that. Right? So then we will decide whether to accept or to discount. Right? So example, right? So let's say we are data word is 1011, and then we only use even parity, so we sent. So the, the one per extra parity bit is, 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 is inserted, which is to make it even number, so 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Right? So this is what is being sent. So if received, what we receive is this one. Right? So in, so in, in this case, it's all even parity, so therefore it is, we assume it is correct. Because the number of, number of bits, number of ones in the code word received is already even. Right? And we're using even parity, so that means we assume this is correct. Right? No problem. If one of the bits has been changed, right, the third bit has been changed from 100111 becomes 10011. Now, if you look at this, the number of ones in the received code word is now odd number. Right? It's not even, no longer even. Therefore, the system will say there is an error. Again, so the, where the error happens, it doesn't matter whether the bit changes in data bit or the parity bit, it doesn't matter. Because we are looking at, what we're looking at is the total number of ones in the code word. Right, so it doesn't matter. But what happens if we get two bits change? Right, bit number one, bit number two, bit, uh, bit number one, and the bit number five. First and last bits are changed. Right? So in this case, what happens? If you look at the number of ones, it is even, right? So in this case, we are using even parity. Therefore, the system will decide that there's no problem. Right? There's no errors because we receive the code word contains even number of ones. So although two bits has changed, the system will now be able to detect. Right? Three bits change, then you will know one, two, three. Okay, this, there are only three ones here. 
something is wrong because it's supposed to be even number of ones. Right? So what, what, can, we do, what can we conclude from here? Single bit error change can detect. Right? Two bits of data change, two bits change cannot detect. Three bits change can or cannot? Can or cannot? Can detect, of course. Yeah, it's an example given here. Three bits, of, three bits change can detect. Four, five, all right, do your homework. Try and see what happens if you have four errors, five errors, six errors. So what type of errors can be detected by simple parity? All right, then you'll know. What is the, what is the efficiency of this uh, simple parity in terms of checking? Okay, so I leave it to you. If I give you the answer, no, it's no fun. You won't discover. All right, so find out. All right, so what happens is that in this case now, if you look at this, these three examples, right, if one bit changes, it can detect. Two bit changes cannot detect. Three bit changes can detect. So sometimes can detect, sometimes cannot detect. So this system, simple parity check is not good enough, right? So we need to find a better way, right? So the second me method for error checking is it's basically two, called two-dimensional parity. Okay, even bef before that, we go into that. Even though we know there's an error here, right? For example, we know there's supposed to be, uh, what we receive are odd, odd number of ones. We're supposed to receive even number of ones. Since we receive, we receive odd number of ones, we know there's an error. But do you know which, which bit has been changed? You will know, right? Because we're only looking at the odd and even number. You won't know which bit, which, bit, which bit has been changed. So the parity bit, simple parity, can detect errors. Some errors, not all errors. Some errors it can detect. But it cannot be used to correct those errors. Right? So the two-dimensional parity try to overcome these situations. Right? Try to make a better detection system. Right? So in this case, two-dimensional basically means that instead of having one parity bit at the end of the, of the sequence of bits, what we do now is we divide the data word, your, your bits of data, into rows and columns. Right? For example, if you have 28 bits of data word in your, in, in your sequence of bits, we will divide into rows and columns. Okay? So four rows and seven columns. So we put the 28 bits, we write down this way. Right? Rows and columns. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to, we're going to calculate the parity bit for each row and each for each row one parity bit, each row one parity bit, and also for each column one parity bit. So we're going to put in multiple parity bits now. One parity bit per row and one parity bit per column. Right? Earlier system, simple parity we only have one bit at the end. In this case we have multiple parity bits. Right? So we call this the longitudinal parity or two-dimensional parity. So in 28 bits, if you want to send, how many extra bits do we need to send? How many? I should leave it to you also, I think. All right, so if you need to send 28 bits of data word, so what's the code word now? What's the length of the code word? I hope you know how to count. All right, so I leave it to you to find out. Again, the answer is right in front of your eyes, if your eyes are open. All right? OK, so let's say this is the, this is the situation, right? So this is how it works. So here we're using even, even parity, right? So how do we put a bit, bit there? OK, we say for each row, we put one parity bit, OK? So we're using even parity. We make sure that the, the number of ones in each row and each column are even number, right? So one, one, how many we have? We have five. In the first row, we have five ones. So this is odd. We must make it even. So we put a parity bit with one here, right? Second row, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. No. Uh, five, again, is odd, we make it one. So make it even. Third row, one, 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 four already. It's already even. So the parity bit for that particular row will be a, a zero. And so on. Same thing we do for column. Right, so there's, there's, there's extra re redundancy now, multiple redundancies. Okay, let's say, so this is what being sent. So we send this thing, we send these 28 bits plus all these extra parity bits are sent together. Right, so on the receiving side, you will do the same thing again, you will put it into row and columns and then try to check now. So let's say one of the bits has been changed, so this bit earlier was 1, it has become now 0, all right? So this is what you receive. So on the receiver side, the parity checker will go through the, each, each row and each column and see whether the, the parity bit for each row and column is correct, all right? So again, you check row by row. First row, is it correct? How many, how many ones do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is even. Okay, pass. Right? Second row, how many ones do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Is it correct? No, because it's supposed to be even parity and we have odd number of ones. So this row, something's wrong. Right? This one, check again. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. The same thing you do for column. And we, we will realize that column number three is not correct because it's supposed to be even number of ones but we get odd number of ones right so after doing, going through all three we the system will check there's only row number two and column number three has a problem right so in this case now since there's only one problem it can deduce it can it can actually find out which bit has been changed because this, where the rows and the column intersect when they overlap, then we know this is the problem bit. This, this, this bit has been changed. So now the two-dimensional parity can actually not only detect errors, but can also correct that particular error, assuming one single bit has been changed. Right? The simple parity cannot do that. Simple parity can only detect the earlier one. Earlier one, simple parity can only detect the error, but it cannot be able to correct it. Right? So two-dimensional Parity can actually do this for single error. Okay. Another example, now let's say there are two, two bits has been changed right, in the same row. So again, do the checking, this row is okay, this row, one, two, three, four, okay, no problem. Row number two pass. And then column number three will fail, column number five will fail. Right, so two columns fail, all rows pass. So now that means we cannot intersect with them. So we, do not, we know the error happened somewhere in column number three, but where? Because the rows all say okay. So we cannot pinpoint where it is. So single error can detect and correct. Two errors can detect, but cannot correct because we do not know where they are. Right? We know somewhere in row number three and row number five, Oh, sorry, column number three and column number five, but which row we do not know. Right? Three errors. Again, same thing. In this case, you will see that row number one, number three, row number one, two, and three has errors, and only column number one has error. Now, column number two has error. So again, we cannot pinpoint. Three errors can detect. Right? Again, can detect, but cannot correct because we do not know exactly where. Another situation, this is a classic example, right? To show that if, if there are two errors in the same row happen and also in the same column, then what happens is that all the columns pass and all the rows pass, as if everything is all right. Right? So in this case, the two-dimensional parity fails. Because now we have four errors, and they, they, and they fall in a certain pattern in the same row and in the same column, then we have a big, big problem. All four will go undetected. 
All right? So two-dimensional parity also is not perfect. So these examples show you the, the problems with this. Some errors we can detect and correct, but other errors, like four happens, then we are doomed. All right? And it's very dangerous. Four errors, and you say nothing, nothing wrong. All right? So therefore, again, two-dimensional parity can only be used to a certain extent. So therefore, we require something higher, higher than that, something more sophisticated. The parity, where a single parity or two-dimensional parity is too simple, right? Very simplistic. It's not sophisticated enough, right? So we need something more sophisticated to detect multiple errors and maybe see whether it can correct or not, right? So this is where the CRC comes in, the check, cyclic redundancy check. So what we do is that it will try to make use of some special number. So what CRC does is that it will take your original message, your data word, and then it has a special number. It will divide your data word by this particular number. So you take your sequence of bits, right, your data word, and then divide by a special number. Whatever remainder, will be added in as a redundant bit. So the leftover from that division process is added to the remainder. So the original one plus the remainder will be added on and sent code word. And this code word will be sent to the, the other side. On the receiver side, it receives both of them. So what it does, the, on the receiver, the code word received will be divided by the same number again. And then, during this division process, if the, if, the, if the remainder is zero, then, we, then it means there's no error happened during transmission. If during the division here, you get remainder is not zero, then we know error occurs, right? Okay, so, so that's, a, that's the system, uh, that, that's the way you do it, right? We'll take an example how good it is. So, if you compare the diagram, again, we have a in the data word coming in. Then our generator basically will take this word and then divide it by a particular number, special number, and then the remainder will be added, added on to the data word to produce a new code word. This code word be transmitted to the other side. The receiver takes the whole thing and then divides by the same number again and then look at the, the, the remainder. If the remainder has no errors, Zero, okay, except if, if, if the remainder is not zero, then basically that's an error. And if normally there's an error, it will just throw it away and ask for retransmission. Right? So the CRC normally is only good for error detection. It does not try to correct those errors. One it cannot, and the other one is too, is too expensive or too difficult to do correct errors. So just throw it away and ask for retransmission. It's much faster and better to do it. So the main thing is that that particular special number must be known to the both side. Must be sender also must know use the same number, and the receiver also must use the same number for dividing. Right? It's a shared number. So let's take an example. Right? So we have our code word 1001. This is what we want to send. Right? And our special number is divisor is 1011. This is the shared special number. So what we do is that we divide 1001 divide by 1011 and then try to get the remainder that's the idea right and we define that we only for remainder in this case will be 3 bits we want okay so we start dividing i suppose you can follow this right you know how to divide i hope hope you still remember that so 1001 divide by this is 1 right so one multiply this is one zero the one, then, then you subtract. So in this case, what we're subtracting is we're using exclusive all, right? One minus one, zero, zero minus one, one, zero, 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 okay. Right, there's no borrowing. Okay, so we have, we have zero, one, zero here, right? So we take one from here, we take, put this down zero here, right? Can zero, one, one, one divide this? Cannot, it's, it's only three bits. This is four bits, so cannot. Take another one, right? That becomes one, zero, zero. So cannot means we put zero here. 
bring another one here, one zero, okay, this one can. One here, one multiple of this is one zero one, and then uh, we get one one. When we subtract this, we get one one, and then bring out the third one, we get one one zero, okay. So this is our remainder. Our remainder is one one zero. So what we do is that we take the original word plus the remainder, put them together, send it to the to the other side. Right? So what the other side will do, same thing. You will take the whole thing, one zero zero one 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 zero, and then divide by the same number. So take this whole thing, the code word comes in and divide by the same number, and then check whether it got remainder or not. Right? So if you do if you do your steps correctly, you will see that there is no error. Uh, sorry, no remainder. Right? You can divide perfectly. So th therefore, then we know the first. Then, we, then from there we extract out that the data word is actually correct. Right? You can extract. This is our original word. Let's say along the way, what we receive is this one. We're supposed to receive. We sent one zero zero one 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 zero. But what we receive is basically the fourth bit has been changed from one. It became zero. Right, one bit has been changed along the transmission. So if you do the same thing, now we divide by the same number, and what we get is that we will have a remainder. Right? Right, so in this case, remainder means that this particular code word received is not correct. So therefore, the data word will be discarded. We cannot extract out because our code word received has error. Right? So this is more sophisticated in the sense that you can detect multiple bits of errors. One bit, two bit, three bit, four bit, and so on. Right? It depends on what number. So the question is, what number do you choose? So this divisor is very important. The choice of this special number is very important. So in this case, how do we choose a special number? There are examples given. So there's an 8-bit, 8-bit, Divisor, this is the recommended one, right? This is used by ATM, not your ATM, the one which, uh, which gives out your cash, right? The ATM packets during, the, uh, during your network. It uses this particular sequence of bits as the divisor, right? And then HDLC or even, 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 even uh, so this is 8 bits, 32 bits, or 10 bits, 16 bits, or 32 bits, right? So for, for example, like uh, Ethernet lens, it uses this 32 bits sequence of number as your special bit. Right? So if you have a data, as, if your divisor is 8 bits, then make sure your data is more than 8 bits. Otherwise, you cannot divide. Correct? Right? So we call this the CRC polynomials. Either we represent them as bits like this, or normally what we do is that we represent as polynomials with power uh, equation, right? So how do we, how actually do the same thing. So if x plus 6 plus x plus 1, we convert them to binaries like this, right? The first one is normally on the from the right, is basically a to the power of 0, x power 0, x power 1, power 2, power 3, until power 6, right? So if it's a 1 there, then this is a 1. If 0 means then there's no power 2, right? 0, power 3, don't have because it's 0. Power 4, 0. Power 5, 0. Power 6 is 1. So it becomes like this. Right? So x, x, plus, x power 6 plus x plus 1 is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. All right? Same thing here. All right? So then what we need to do, we need to do is that once we know this, with this particular polynomial we use, then this is the divisor, we will use it in our calculation. Right? So this particular division, either we can do a binary, we can do a binary division like this, or we can use a polynomial division. Right? So this is another example. So let's say our data word is x power 3 plus 1, and our divisor is x power 3 plus x plus 1. Right? So we want to divide this by this. So how do we divide? Again, the same thing. We can follow the same example. So 
So since the power of both are the same, what we need to do is we need to shift this to towards right or multiply. Right? So data world is left shifted three bits. Right? In other words, you multiply by x3. So this one becomes multiplied by x3 becomes x power 6 plus x to the power 3. Right? So then make sure that our code, our data world is, is, is bigger than the divisor. Okay, then you divide. Right? So x power 6 can divide by x power 3? Yes, x power 3, okay, and so on. Right? x power 3 times this one, power 6, this plus this, x power 4, x plus power 3 times 1 is x power 3, and then we subtract x power 4, okay, and then so on. All right, the same thing. And this is the, re the remainder. We are interested only in the remainder. Right? So we take the original data word, and then we attach the remainder to it. And this is what we're going to send. So either we do our division like this, or we do it like this. So whichever way, we convert accordingly, right? based on that particular example. Right? So in this case, you, must, you make sure you know what, what you're doing. You make sure you know, you know how to do this. Right, so given a sequence of data word, right, so, and then given a divisor or CRC uh, polynomial, you must be able to know what is the code word sent, how is the remainder calculated. And also on the receiver side, if you receive a code word, whether or not there's an error in it. Right, so able to calculate, do this division and able to calculate, decide whether there is an error or not. So, the, so the, 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 the longer the polynomial, the better it is right, in terms of detecting errors. So CRC advantages, yes, it's good in detecting single bit errors, double bit errors, odd number of errors, even number of errors, and also a certain length of burst errors. This depends on the polynomial chosen. So normally, normally it's that if you choose a long one like this, 32 bits, then we'll be able to detect at least about 30 or 31 bits burst length, burst error of 30 or 31 bits. Right, we're able to de detect. And the main thing is that CRC is very, very simple. It's very easy implemented in hardware. Right, the circuits has been done for calculation and all that because XOR and all that is right, very fast. It can be implemented very, very fast. Right, and it's, it's commonly used in networks. Uh, later, you will see that if you look at data packets, when you, when you send a data in a packet, you send a destination header, destination address, source address, your data, and the other component will be your CRC header. It means that it calculates the header, CRC, and then puts into the packet. So that it will be, it will be, calc it will be checked on the receiving side again. All right? So make sure you know how to do all these things. Okay, then we'll stop here.